Last week, we stayed in a campground during a 95 degree week that was out of the norm in the Midwest. The campground that we were staying at was just basically a glorified parking lot uh, with gravel and just sun beating down on us. During that stay, we discovered that putting 11 windows in the tiny house might not have been the greatest decision as far as cooling the tiny house would go. So we made the decision that we were going to put an awning on the house. We placed the order on Amazon. A couple days later, the order was at our house and we were ready to put it on. While we were putting on, figured I'd make this video, show you guys how we did it since the tiny house had no pre-installations designed for awnings that the RVs may have. So stick around, we'll show you exactly how we did it. So we decided that we're going to add an awning up here. We ordered a 19 foot awning, which get us about here, all the way to the back. So finally get some shade to this window and this window, hopefully cut down on some of that heat. A replacement tarp and the wiring and hooks and accessories for that. And then this is the long reel. So I'm going to get unpacked and see what else I need before I make a Home Depot run. I opened the large box to take inventory and had the two support arms that go vertically to the awning, uh, the mounting brackets, screws, bolts, all that fun jazz, uh, metal stakes, instructions. And then underneath of these three things was all of that. But the big surprise is that inside of these was the RV rail that I had purchased separately because the description didn't say anything about. So that was almost a hundred bucks that I'll be able to get back because it was completely included with this. So uh, get the awning rail, the 20 foot uh, awning bar, the awning, both the rails, all the screws, everything for the one price of the item of the awning kit that I'll go ahead and link in the description. Uh, we'll see how this all comes together, but so far I'm super impressed with how this looks. So this comes in three pieces that need to be connected and the connectors are bolted with one bolt on the inside of the end pieces. So you just have to take out the first screw and then this pops right out. Uh, one thing that's maybe obvious to you, but was not to me, is the letters. The placement of the letters not only matters for what goes together, but also which direction it's facing. So you want to make sure that the C's are both facing up. If you try to put it together like this, it will come so close to fitting together, but not actually fit together and will be irritating. So you just got to match up the letters so that they're facing the same direction. And then... At, uh, so you'll have two on one side, lock it in with a screw. Uh, start it with your fingers. I uh, use my impact driver for everything. And it's super easy to strip these. So make sure you get it started with your fingers and then just push it together. And then you've got three more screws to put in there and uh, four on each side. So you're just gonna put in uh, 12 screws on each. They're provided. And then this is all together in one piece. So once you've got the long fabric pulled together, it's time to unroll the actual fabric. And you'll notice that there's two uh, places to feed wire through. There's one here 
do that there. And then there's one not quite at the other end. So this one folds over and there's a fabric a little bit in. And you wanna make sure that this is the end that the uh, roller gets attached to. Uh, this is gonna be your little flap that falls over the side and gives you just a little bit of shade on the side. So you wanna make sure that you do the roller on this side, not this side, or it's not gonna work. Then what you wanna do is you want to start feeding this polyline into this whole length here. Uh, it takes a little bit, and if you straighten it as you go, it makes it a little bit easier. But we'll go ahead and we'll feed this all the way through, and then we'll move on to the next step. Another thing that I suggest doing is laying it so that the fabric is laid out the same way that it's going to go onto your house. So I had to roll this around and bring it so that this is on the closest side to me so that I didn't have to try to figure out how things go on backwards. It's just exactly the way that it's going to go up on the house. So next step, you want to feed this with the flap rolling over this. And you just have to take the cord and the fabric and just feed it into this slot very, very carefully. Uh, you wanna make sure not to force it or you're gonna rip this fabric right here. Uh, you can see that even putting it in this little bit kind of peeled the paint off. So it's, it's a very tight fit for that. But once you get it past this double layer, it actually slides in very, very smoothly. So you can just kind of want to make sure that this stays straight right in here. And then you can just kind of pull through or feed this, whichever way is easier based on how you're set up. But that's, and if it starts to catch, just come down here, make sure that this is nice and straight, and then come back and start feeding again. Come down, make sure this is nice and straight. This isn't something that you wanna super rush. You just wanna back and forth until you're all the way at the end. You'll feel it catch like that. If there's a kink in the, in the line, just kind of come down here and straighten it out. And then it should pull fairly easy again. Um, you get to the other end want to get so that this is all the way in down here. Once you've got your fabric in, you want to give it split the difference here so that it's centered in the middle of that. And then that one's done. The second piece, it's actually labeled second row um, on the main bar underneath. And you just rotate this over top of the main bar. And then you have to feed this 
down inside of there, and then you feed the poly rope over top of the fabric. It's much more difficult than it sounds, and you need to be very careful. It's very easy to put hole, uh, like you can see I did there. Uh, so the best thing that I found was to actually take my screwdriver and come in from this side, reach up and push down to create a small hoop. Then as I was inserting the poly cord, I twisted. The reason that that helped is there's the threading on this where it's doubled over here. So it's the thickest part of this whole thing is right here on this edge. So as you're feeding this in, just kind of work this in gently with this. Again, very easy to put a hole in it, but very gently while rolling this, and then it allows it to kind of push in. Then once you've gotten it started, then it's just a matter of uh, pushing it down inside as you're going and feeding the poly cord in. Uh, this part is going to take quite a while, so it's another thing you don't want to rush. Uh, just kind of tr try to keep it as straight as possible, because um, when you get these kinks in it, like right here, uh, that's where you're going to run into problems. So you just want to try to keep it as straight as possible from the very beginning. And the better off you are at the start, the better off going down you're going to be. So this beginning part is the most important. So take your time, don't push too hard and create holes, and twist and put the screwdriver in from the end and create a, a loop kind of that way. And uh, we were able to make it work. So the easiest way I've found to start feeding this is to just feed a little bit in with your screwdriver to create a little bit of a, a groove there. Uh, don't get too far and try to push in from this side so that you've got this part here nice and tight and uh, then just push this through and it slides right in. So the second one, as we've gotten pretty close to the end, it's getting pretty difficult to feed through all the way from over there. And we've come up with two things that have helped a little bit. Uh, the first one, I honestly do not know how it's going to affect the fabric. Uh, this may be a good idea, maybe a terrible idea, but I've just been pay, uh, spraying canola oil into the track and that seems to be helping a little bit. And uh, then the second thing is this, the front likes to catch on the fabric a little bit. So not only should you, just lead ahead and push it down a little bit. But if you kind of give it a little bit of a push with the screwdriver every once in a while, that helps guide it and it doesn't let it get caught on the fabric. So those are two tips that we learned trying to feed this second one in because it is not fun. We've been at it for about 10 minutes now and we're almost there, but we are both exhausted. So, uh, canola oil and a screwdriver, uh, helping to lead the way. At the very end, you're going to have just a little bit left to go, and it's not going to want to. So, a pair of channel locks really help you get a grip, and you can push it the rest of the way through with the channel locks. Okay, so it's time to put the arms on, and it came with a screw or a bolt through here. You just have to find the corresponding leg, remove the bolt, line up the holes here, and then feed the bolt back down through. Then there's a washer and a nut for the other side. And that arm's installed. That's all there is to that one. So once assembled, this is what it should look like with this bracket being on top with the right side. So played around with this for quite a while to make sure that I had it on right. 
but you essentially want to be able to stand it up and then these are going to be your offsets up against the wall. So this will be your wall, this will be there, and then so this should all be the top of your tarp, which should not have the seam. So just want to make sure that you assemble that correctly because it's not fun to take this apart, trust me. The next step involves putting the railing strip onto the tiny house. If you have an RV, this is most likely already attached at the very top of the awning side of your RV. Since this is a custom built tiny house, we did not have that luxury. So we had to manually install this where we wanted it. We started by measuring down from the roof line rather than trying to get it perfectly level. Since in RV parks, it's very rarely where I can get exactly level. So I just measured down 12 inches from the roof line and went off of that roof line to get my measurement. So this is when the real problems began. We tried to install this with two people and just could not make it happen because you really need someone at the rail and someone holding each of the two arms. So to get this started, what you want to do is have someone on each of the arms slowly and carefully moving it down the rail while the third person feeds the a rope into the awning rail. You want to do this very carefully because this is the final step 
if you rip the awning at this point, uh, you've put all of this work in for nothing, and you're just kind of stuck. This is the point when we realize that you really have to have someone feeding it into the awning rail, someone pulling on it, and then one person guiding each leg. We finally gave up on trying it with three people, and fortunately Mike had uh, some people at his campsite. He went and grabbed another person, and with someone feeding it at the very end, someone feeding it smoothly where it enters the rail, and then someone on each leg, this went much more smoothly. As you'll see, once you've got those guiding forces in all the right places, it slides right through. Uh, I'm on top laying on the roof, and a big part of making this go smoothly was I pinched the fabric and kind of pulled it up so that it wasn't pulling against the bottom of that guide rail. And that really helped get that moving as we had the feeder at the other end as well. Once the awning is through the RV rail, then the next step is to attach the metal brackets from the legs to the top and the bottom. I had two bolts in the top. It was simply a matter of getting the leg level with the top and bottom. To do that, I just used a four foot level that I used to level the house. I held that up to the leg, got it adjusted where I wanted it, figured out the height that I wanted the bottom bracket, and then use the included bolts to mount that directly to the side of the house as well.
next step is just to repeat the same process on the other side. This is just an up-close view of how I installed it through the metal siding on our tiny house. I used a small drill bit to pre-drill and then just used the impact driver to drive the bolt straight through into the backing. Once everything is fully installed, it's simply a matter of pulling the lock pins out and you're ready to put your awning out for the first time. I hope you found this install video helpful. If you did, make sure to click the like button to help us out. If you enjoy Tiny House content, make sure to follow the Tiny House Travelers on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. And uh, make sure to check out the other videos that we have. Until next time, remember, tiny houses make for big adventures.